It's 5am. That's peak hour in Yicheng. And I'm about to embark on an epic five-day adventure up the mighty Yangtze River. So this is the third longest river in the world. In fact, it is much longer than Australia is wide. And on this cruise, hopefully over the next few days, I'll uncover the secrets on the water and also on the land. My Chinese adventure began with a flight on Sichuan Airlines to Chongqing. And after travelling around China, we're headed the final 648 kilometres back along the Yangtze. Ni hao. And thanks to SNA Tours, I'm exploring the river in five-star style on board the Yangtze Gold. It's got everything you could expect from a floating palace and more. But it's outside where the magic happens and the Yangtze provides it in spades. It's surrounded by spectacular scenery and stunning gorges. There are a lot of gorges on this cruise, but it's easy to see why well, everyone's got their camera out right now. This is Chutang Gorge. It rises more than a kilometre up into the air. It's so high, it's actually generating its own weather system. The water vapour's coming up, condensing, and forming that cloud up there. The Yangtze stretches across more than half of China and was flooded in a controversial move to generate hydroelectricity. And while the main river is so vast it can take ocean liners, there are heaps of smaller tributaries full of history and mystery, which can be explored on day trips using smaller vessels. Taking me on my first expedition is guide George, and he's wasted no time in introducing me to a lovely local lady. People call it Sleeping Beauty Mountain. You see, the lady here, yeah. the lady head, the big feet for the ladies. <laughs> If I had a sister, she'd look yeah. like that. <laughs> right, right. Big feet, big feet, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can see eyes and a nose and a mouth. Yeah. This side trip is taking us off the beaten path and down the Kutang Gorge. It's an area believed to have been populated for over 15,000 years and dotted with caves that hold something truly remarkable. And look back. It's a large collection of coffins perched high into the mountain face by the mysterious Bar people. Yeah, the Bar people is a minority. Two thousand, three thousand years ago, the largest no more Bar people up here, right here. Where'd they go? Uh, they disappeared mysteriously. That hasn't decomposed. That coffin still looks almost brand new, and it's two thousand, three thousand years well, old. It's a coffin. It's made by wood, but we call it petrified. The amazing thing for me, though, is you look at that, and even with modern climbing techniques and ropes and abseiling and all the rest of it, That's you tough. couldn't get that in there. It's hard at work, maybe a Spider-Man. <laughs> and as we travel further away from the mainstream, our boats get more traditional to match. Here, it's easy to imagine what much of the Yangtze may have looked like many years ago. And the locals, they love to set the scene. Uh, that's a music man. They play the music for you right here. Did you request this, George? Uh, yeah. But actually, it will be paid by our tour company. <laughs> it's Don't ruin the illusion, <laughs> George. <laughs> but I'm under no illusions about the scenery. It is truly spectacular. It's really only now when you're actually on this small boat that you get a feel for the power and the history of this area because those rocky towers are so high and they really lean right over the top of you. It's peaceful, yet it is also quite powerful. On any given day, there are around 480,000 people walking around Sydney's CBD, 55,000 drivers getting road rage, and maybe 10,000 meals being Instagrammed. With that many people around, you might not think it, but it's also the perfect hiding spot. You know, through our history, whenever people have sensed impending disaster and doom, they've done one thing. They've gone to ground. So why should today be any different? So I'm headed to the heart of the CBD. Desperate times, desperate measures. And I'm being smuggled through this secret Sydney by the tank stream tour and my guide, Yvonne. So what is this here? What this is, is the tank stream. It's why Sydney is where it is. Yeah. It's due to the water supply that they found in 1788. It was a stream mighty enough that required bridges to get across it. So it's basically a creek that the city has consumed. That's right. This was Sydney's water source for around 40 years, but now 
It's used for stormwater runoff. So even after all these years, this is still serving a purpose. If this wasn't here, whenever there was a downpour, all that water would stay on the streets. With the next rainfall, this whole area can fill with water. What's that sound? That's the cars going over the maintenance hole in Hunter Street. It's what? Oh, wow. <laughs> I have to actually stand up here. <laughs> so there's a manhole there, and the city is just almost... At a metre above our heads. That's crazy. Something tells me I need to go even further underground. Thank you. Thank you. So for that, I'm headed to St James Station near Hyde Park and into a place that nobody can enter, except under exceptional circumstances. Exceptional circumstance. You bet it is. Come on. I've heard about a train without a station, but this is a station without a train. This has been sitting like this since 1926. We just never finished it. The line was originally intended to transport people from Bondi to the CBD and is just one of several abandoned ghost platforms around Sydney. It's kind of spooky though, isn't it? It is kind of spooky and right under the heart of the city. It's an area we do not let people in. You're going to part of Sydney that no one ever sees. So this is part of the air raid shelters in case there was an air raid in Sydney. So nothing can penetrate this space. These walls are literally a metre thick. But just imagine what it would have been like here. Air raid sirens going off in Sydney. How freaky would have that have been for you? What is this? Well, this is part of tree roots coming from up above. You are now directly under Hyde Park. So nothing can get in here apart from tree roots? Nothing. Yeah, look at this. These were soldiers that were working in the tunnels here during World War II. So some people thought they were never getting out of here, so they have started leaving messages. So these are from over 70 years ago? They certainly are. So they eventually got out? How do we get out? <laughs> With this many twists and turns, I'm left wondering if I'm ever going to see the light of day again. It's a ladder. It is a ladder. We're heading out. Let's just go up and see where it takes oh, us. Oh, yes. This has to be the end, right? Oh. Just watch your head there, Chris, it's a bit low. Yeah, I noticed. Tony, down again? Yeah, we have to go down. At this stage, there's only one word I can think of. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and of course, what journey would be complete without an underground river? I did not expect this. This thing is six metres wide, a kilometre long, and in some places six metres deep. It's incredible. So it is incredible and you can also get out that way if you wanted to. What? Just keep going down here yeah. and swing to the left and you'll find your way out. Have a good day. <laughs> That's good. Tony? Tony! I've heard about underground surf spots but this is ridiculous. So far, my SNA tour of the mighty Yangtze has shown me the spectacular natural beauty of the river. But you'll want to be hitting the decks bright and early because the scenery stops for no one. We've just entered Wu Gorge, which is also called the Gorge of the Witches. Now, the mist on the hills makes this a really mystical and mysterious place. But for me, the spookiest thing is up on the top of the hill. It almost looks like there are figures looking down on you. And my day trip today is going to take me right into the heart of this area to meet the Tuwija people who can trace their history in the area back over nearly 12 centuries. And taking me around is Lisa. Hello there. Hello. How 
How are you? I'm Chris. It's very beautiful. Yes, sunny days or raining days, very beautiful here. And the rain may even be good luck because there's going to be a wedding later and we are all invited. But first, Lisa's keen to find me a date. That was never agreed to, but I'm, I'm open. Um, I'm single. And uh, no matter you are uh, single or not, it's OK for you. <laughs> Yes. Really? Yes, yes. It's open-minded? Yes. Well, let's get going. This scenic walk will take me on a two-hour trip around the village, but it doesn't take long for Lisa to find me a potential match. So you come here, you can stand here, call this beautiful girl Yao Mei loudly here. Yao Mei. How you can say Li Cha means Ni Hao, hello. Li Cha. Yes, it's, it's just Mao Ju. Still got it? Yeah. Let's yeah. go in. Well, a smile's not a date. Likely the Tuija people have another way to profess their love. Yeah, if the boy uh, likes a girl, he will sing the love songs to her. And uh, if she also likes him, she will respond to him on the other side of the mansion. If they are singing to find love, do you mind if I see if there's love out there for me? Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. And the past time you can. No response. No girls like you. Didn't even sugarcoat that, did you? Strike two. Looks like I might be dateless for the wedding after all. But at least I've got these guys to keep me company. Never feel too lonely on this walk because these guys are right along the way. They're little barbary macaques. They're cheeky. And they're looking for food and not human company. Well, time for this wedding. The traditions here are 12 centuries in the making, and like any wedding, it really kicks off with the arrival of the bride. But where's the groom? I think, I think the bouquet is about to be thrown here. I guess I won't need a date after all. But it looks like not everyone here is happy about it. I think I can turn that frown upside down. Okay. Oh. Oh, I just go, very, very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. I'll be honest, this isn't quite what I was expecting when I woke up this morning. Just one question, what, what is my wife's name? Liao uh, Feng Chun. Liao Feng Chun. Liao Feng Chun. Liao Feng Chun. Liao Feng Chun. What is a small hitch, though, is that I have to get on a cruise boat. Could we uh, put our marriage on, on hold, just on ice for a little while? Yeah. And then I'll come back. Yes, OK. It's not quite the happy ending I was hoping for. Didn't think love would come so quickly yet, played so fast. But that's the Yangtze for you. It fascinates, tugs at the heartstrings and leaves you with a lifetime of memories. Each year, over one and a half million people come to see the Great Barrier Reef, which isn't surprising given its jaw-dropping natural beauty. But are these two iconic Barrier Reef shots, well, a bit more unbelievable than the rest? I'm starting my mission at Airlie Beach, Queensland. And first contact is with Airwit Sundays, where pilot Dan is going to get me high. How you doing? G'day, Chris. Welcome and to out to my target. Right. Can you take me to this reef here? Yeah, we can do that. Let's go. Shoot Harbour Traffic, Papa Golf, uh, Tango, Caravan Amphib taxis on the western. We're headed first to Hardy Reef. And then we've got a date with the heart. This quest has now become very real because we're now airborne tracking direct to see if this is fact or Photoshop. Our trip out will take us a full 30 minutes, which is no surprise given the Barrier Reef spans more than double the distance of Sydney to Melbourne. We're going to go out to the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, we'll show you the views of the heart and Hardy Reef. Nothing to hide. Nothing to hide at all, no. 
as you start flying out over it, you realise why the Great Barrier Reef is billed as one of the seven natural wonders of the world. And you can see why, can't you? Just the density of that coral and just how, when you look left to right, it's just everywhere, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Even the whales seem overshadowed by this reef. But I'm yet to be convinced that Hardy and Hart reefs haven't had a little nip and tuck after the photo shoot. Right now, though, my first mission target is in sight. That looks a lot like that reef there. That's Hardy Reef, yeah. That's Hardy's Reef up here. Just beautiful. You know what? That's a nice shot. I reckon we can beat it, though. Let's have a crack. Unretouched and natural as nature intended it. And with part one of my mission complete, it's time for some time out. Yeah, Chris, so we're going we're gonna to go down to uh, the southern end of Hardy Reef. We're going to be uh, landing on the water there and uh, we'll go for a snorkel. Beautiful. You're throwing the water skiing for free. Yeah. You bring a rope? <laughs> nice landing. The Great Barrier Reef is home to around 600 species of coral and 1,500 species of fish. And the snorkelling is spectacular. But as great as it is, I've done heaps of snorkelling in my time. There's one thing I've never done. So come out on this wing. Jump from the wing of a seaplane. And with that one ticked off, I'm ready to complete my mission. Hooking only traffic for Pago off Tango's Airborne, climb 500, trekking over to the heart. OK, Chris, so we're going to be coming up to the Heart Reef now. We have uh, people scream when they see the Heart Reef. We had Oprah shed a tear. We have uh, engagements over the Heart Reef. It's because it's romantic, it's real, and we're going to show that to you today. And there she is. Finding our right-hand side there, the, the Heart Reef. World famous. The camera never lies. The software can. But aside from the higher tides, I've got to say, this one is spot on. All right, it, it, it looks real. But just to make sure, I'm going around for another look. I've got to say, that is spectacular. Perfect. And very real. Is it like the postcard? Well, honestly, I think it's better than the postcard. It's the final leg of my SNA tour, cruising down the mighty Yangtze River. And we're headed to the ghost city of Fengdu, considered to be the gateway to the afterlife. You know, normally, whether you go to heaven or hell, well, you kind of have to wait until you die to find out the answer. But in China, with its real can-do attitude, they've found a way to do it in just a few hours. So I'm limbering up for a series of tests up that hill. If I pass, I'll go to heaven. If I fail, it's off to hell. With only three hours to get my fate decided... Excuse me, excuse me, sorry. I'd better get cracking. And with over 700 steps to get to the top of this mountain, it isn't just survival of the fairest, but also the fittest. This here could either be my stairway to heaven or stairway to hell. I think this is the first challenge. It's a bridge, you've got to get over it in an odd number of steps. Past these guys. All right. One, two, three, and through. Ha-ha. <laughs> OK, that was easy. I might have a shot at getting to the pearly gates after all. What's next? All right, so it's meant to be here. Yeah, it's like a bonus test, like a get-out-of-jail-free car, because if you're going to lift this, it's meant to weigh about 180 kilos, it displays superhuman strength and therefore makes you immortal. Uh, 
It's got a balance though. Immortality, here I come. Or maybe not.